And most integrators are gonna sign the deal, going in knowing they're not delivering it. Granted, are there a lot more people who are doing it optimally? Of course, Unified Namespace has exploded, it's everywhere. So the question was, what do we do here? What do you do when the project is absolutely 100% doomed for failure? Take zero. All right, so for those of you in Mastermind, I touched on this um, topic and story uh, in our last Mastermind session uh, here in September. But I wanted to expand on it. I really didn't go into great detail. But essentially, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a community member who is a their systems integrator as well reached out to ask for some consultation on uh, a project that was being proposed to them. Okay, um, they were asked to quote a a project in the automotive industry. The opportunity, the lead came from a cloud provider. So the cloud, they had done some work for this cloud provider. They had done a, exceptional work. I actually had a chance to review some of their work. It's They've done an incredible job. I actually worked with them a little bit on troubleshooting one of the problems that they had. So I had seen the work that they had done that this cloud provider also saw that said, hey, we've got this other opportunity with this automotive manufacturer. We would like for you to quote this this opportunity. All right, so that's the background. So the community member goes and gets the specification from the, the potential client. And the specification is essentially, we want to collect data from our facilities, from a facility. We want to put that in this cloud provider's backend. And then we want to do some modeling to try and predict, essentially, supply chain issues. Okay, uh, so what they want to do is they want to use the reality, the data from the manufacturing floor to predict supply chain issues. And without getting into the detail, I don't want to, I can't share the, the technical aspects, but what I can say is this, is that the manufacturer has been collecting data for a year and a half on the plant floor that contains downtime statuses where if, the, if a machine was down, one of the reasons it, it could be down was for something that would be supply chain related. They've been collecting that data for a year and a half. It is stored in a historian and a database. They also have connectivity to the actual assets. And what they wanna do is they wanna take that data, they wanna put it in the cloud, they wanna model it, they want to write an algorithm that can look at current state the current state of things and compare it to the past and try to predict, hey, we have an incoming supply chain issue where if we don't do something, change our schedule, whatever, then we're gonna end up having assets being down because they don't have raw materials to run, etc. All right, it's not a novel concept. Lots of companies have tried to do this. Um, some are doing it, some are not. Throughout the process, the integrator reached out to me and said, hey, Walker, how do you, how would you handle this? Can you take a look at this and give me some advice? And so there was actually myself, I looked at it and another, another, another member of the team looked at it. And so we did like an independent review and then drew our own conclusions. And basically my conclusion was they, they had a few things that they wanted done. They, they really wanted this, the vendor, the cloud provider was gonna be like the lead the integrator was going to essentially support the vendor. They would be the expertise to get it done. They needed, it was supposed to be done by the end of the year, end of 2024, so basically you gotta get it done in three and a half, four months. Need something functional. Number two, the mandate for this automotive manufacturer came from their corporate headquarters. So it didn't come from the facility where they're actually gonna be doing it, but the mandate came from the corporate headquarters. The corporate headquarters sent this specification and said, you need to do this, okay? So they had me review it, they reviewed it, and we had another member of our team review it, and independently, all three of us came to the same conclusion, okay? So the conclusion was this. Number one, the timeline is not doable. Best case scenario, just based on our gut assessment, you know, end of the first quarter next year might be doable, assuming we do some things we, we make some changes to our approach here. So number one, not doable. Number two, 
the data is not is not at a high enough resolution for you to predict to, to predict anything to get any confidence in your prediction part of the mandate was we have to be 85 percent confident in our prediction if we're going to predict hey we have an impending downtime related to supply chain if we're going to predict that then the model we train has got to be 85% accurate. We got to be able to predict 85% of the incidents. Here's the problem. The way that the data was being collected is down to the day resolution. Okay, number one. Now there are events within each day, but the lowest resolution data is a daytime number. And, it, and that daytime, and a, and a daily number is one of the concri- critical variables that'll be used in training the model. So that means we only have 540 data points to do the training of the model on, which anybody who's doing machine learning knows 540 data points is essentially, that's barely getting started. You could train a rudimentary model in in all the models I've done so far. You could train a rudimentary model where you're getting some type of prediction, but you don't know how confident you are in it with a thousand data points you can get to maybe 90% confident with 10,000 data points. These are just general numbers. But obviously, ideally, the more data you have, the better, the more accurate the predictions are gonna be. So number two, they they don't have enough data, first off, to be able to make this happen, okay? Number three, none of the data is normalized. So what I mean by normalized is, is that the data that is stored is not stored in a way where it, 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 it's ready for consumption or training in a model, okay? And secondly, it isn't fully contextualized. They're not accounting for normalization and contextualization in the data that they're currently storing, and they're also not accounting for it in their specification. So the question was, what do we do here? Because obviously the integrator is between a rock and a hard place. Now, obviously the integrator, we all came to the same conclusion and, and, the, and the question is, what should the client do? Should the client, what, what should you do? And the answer is, what you should do is stop and take a step back and reassess your strategy for approaching problems like this, okay? Now, is there an integrator and a vendor out there that's gonna tell you this is doable? Absolutely. The vast majority of inter- integrators out there are gonna say, are gonna know privately this is not doable, but we want the work. We're gonna go ahead and tell them it's doable. We'll be careful with our contract, with our purchase order, so that we can write a change order and let's get the job, we'll get in there. Maybe they come to the same conclusion. We could do this by June of next year, okay? And most integrators are gonna sign the deal and they're going, going in knowing they're not delivering it. And then they'll, they'll rely on their contract group to protect them in the agreement so that they could change order, change order, change order. So it's not gonna be on time and it isn't gonna be on budget and it's not even gonna be close. And it may not even work because you gotta fix the data no matter what, it has to be fixed. All right, but what should you do, right? So we know what most people are gonna do, but what should you do? This is exactly what I told the integrator. I said, what you should do is you need to say to them, listen, I know what you're trying to achieve here. First and foremost, the person at their corporate headquarters who sent that specification is in the wrong role, okay? If they're gonna send a spec like that and they're not gonna know the minimum requirements that that facility has to meet in order to be able to deliver this, they are in the wrong position, okay? If they send that out and they say, this is the thing you gotta deliver by the end of the year because we have some capital, we allocated for it, and they send it out without knowing the minimum requirements in order for them to be able to achieve success, they are in the wrong job. This is a problem all across our industry, right? So that's problem number one. Number two, you have to, I said, you need to say to them, listen, I know what you're trying to do here. I I see what you're trying to achieve. It's not doable in its current form, okay? You're going to spend, first off, you won't be able to afford it and you won't have the patience. And when they say, what do you mean? You're gonna say, this is gonna cost you much more than you think and it's gonna take much longer and you will run out of money and patience before you see tangible results. Is it possible to bring somebody in here and do this as a siloed solution 
ETL, one direction to the other, try and, yes. Everything is a function of time and money. The question is, will you actually spend all the money required to do it the way you've got it on paper? And will you have the patience to wait for the result? The answer is no. Okay, it's no. And it's the reason that you hear there's articles all over the world talking about the myth of digital transformation. The reason why is because people are going about it wrong and have been and continue to go about it wrong. Granted, are there a lot more people who are doing it optimally? Of course. You know what I mean? Unified namespace has exploded all over the world. It's everywhere. You can't get away from it. There are people doing it right, but is that the majority of the market? No. And this is just another example. By the way, this company who spec this, the cloud provider who brought the opportunity, these are two of the biggest names in the industry. Like, this is not, you know, Billy Bob's fucking crab shack. Okay? These are these are ostensibly leaders in in uh, industrial cloud solutions and manufacturing, in theory. So what is it I said to them? I said, okay, here's, and we, we came into agreement here. You got to tell them you have to take a step back and approach this from a strategic and iterative approach. So number one, you have to define why it is you want to do this in the first place, not the problem statement, the strategic goals you are trying to achieve, okay? As part of a much larger digital strategy, a much larger digital strategy that states, here's why we want to be a digital company. This is, it's not why I want to use technology to predict a supply chain issue. It's why do I want to be a digital company? And everything I do has to fit underneath that. And then architecture, you have to, we have to define an architecture that says, here is how we are a digital company. In Tesla's case, we will use Tesla as the example. In Tesla's case, warp is the architecture, okay? They have an edge-driven, report by exception, lightweight, open architecture called warp. And it is their digital infrastructure. That's the architecture that helps you deliver on the strategy. And then the minimum technical requirements are the rules for playing in our infrastructure, okay? This client doesn't have that. So what are they trying to do? Because they don't have that, they are writing a specification with a problem statement that has a solution they can't deliver. So you have to go back to that and tell them that. And then you gotta say, for those of you who wanna know, Walker, how do you handle these? You say, I can't put my name on this. Maybe you don't have the political capital. Maybe you, you know, I don't want to deal with the corporate headquarters. I'm just going to do the project. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Fuck it, it ain't my money. You know what I mean? It's coming from corporate. That attitude exists. I hate to break the news to you. Maybe you got to do it. As the integrator, as the consultant, as the expert, you got to tell them, I can't put my name on this. This is the problem with the really large consultants. You know, this is why... Deloitte and Wipro and, you know, those bigger companies that we're all familiar with are so focused on billing the hour. And the reason why is because the bigger they get, the more, the harder it is for them to say no when they should say no. The smaller consultant is the one who has a lot more leeway to be able to say, yeah, this isn't going to work. Okay. This isn't, it's not going to work. They're going to play a political game. The bigger companies are going to play a, a political game. They have to. They have bills to pay. Okay? It's just, it's not because they're bad people. It's because the economics, the incentive structure is designed to force them to say yes, even when they know it won't work. They know it won't work. Three independent consultants, three independent people, all came to the, the same conclusion. So you tell them, I can't put my name on this. There is a path to success. Either, I suggest, either we do it that way. We take a step back. We define a strategy and architecture and a minimum technical requirements. We go back to corporate and we say, we need another year before we can try this because we only have 540 data points, okay? We're wasting our time. We're wasting our money if we try to build this model. What we need to do is increase our resolution down to every 10 seconds starting tomorrow. And we need to save our events every 10 seconds starting tomorrow so that a year from now, we don't have 540 data points. We have 540 data points multiplied by 24 times 60 times 10, right? And now I've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of records 
that I can trade on, which I don't have right now. During that time, what we're gonna do is put in the infrastructure that allows us to monitor the events in real time. So that is we're gonna put in a UNS that can kind of put it all together. We can then train a model with the data a year from now. We can plug it into our infrastructure and inference on this infrastructure we do over the next year, building out a UNS so that we can monitor the present in real time at the highest resolution at every second or every event change. That's what you should say. Okay. Now, how does it normally play out? They normally do the project because the person you're talking to just isn't going to fight that battle. You know, people have bills to pay and people, they want to keep their jobs and they don't want to be the person to say, this isn't going to work. And that most people are not transformative and disruptive leaders. Okay. What will happen if you do that? I can't put my name on it. The other thing you could say is if you can't take the step back, then we could do a second thing. We could do something in parallel that'll try and mitigate this damage as long as I'm not responsible for the outcome of that project you're going to do that I said you should wait on. But we should do something in parallel so you have an answer for the organization when it does fail. And if they can't do that, then you say the last thing you should do is go, listen, here's what's going to happen. At 60 days, you're going to probably be frustrated with X. At six months, you're going to be frustrated with Y. When you throw the project out, you know, nine months from now, give me a call. We'll come in and we'll do what I recommended. And that's how you do it, okay? All right, very, very important conversation here, all right? Anyway, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.